Knapp Industries, located in Lodi, New Jersey, was a manufacturer of pharmaceutical products. Knapp also manufactured or blended materials for other companies on a fee or tolling basis, a common practice in the chemical industry. On April 20th, 1995, Knapp employees began to charge water-reactive raw materials into a blending device in preparation for producing a toll order of gold precipitating agent for a Rhode Island company. Less than 24 hours later, the blender and its contents exploded, killing five and injuring eight Knapp employees. The explosion essentially destroyed the Knapp facility. The resulting air and water contamination put thousands of residents at risk. What you are about to see is an animated recreation, along with newsreel and file footage of events that occurred at Knapp Industries on April 20th and 21st, 1995. The operators make a final check of the vessel to ensure it is clean and dry before loading the raw materials. The two operators and leads man find the vacuum head area to be wet Water is also observed on the walls. The night shift foreman orders an operator to wipe the inside walls of the vessel. The vessel is then heated, using the water glycol jacket to further dry the inside surfaces. The vessel is inerted by the third shift operators. The charge of raw materials consisting of sodium hydrosulfite potassium carbonate and finely powdered aluminum begins and continues into the next shift. Operators detect a vanilla-like odor inside the liquid feed tank, which is used to add benzaldehyde, another raw material, into the vessel. Water is also observed in the tank and its filter system. The operators perform a cleaning procedure on the liquid feed tank system. The intention is to remove all water and condensate from the feed system. The portion of the feed spray line inside the vessel could not be accessed to be cleaned. The second shift completes charging the vessel. Due to the excessive amount of material inside, the operator needs to rotate the vessel to lower the level of materials from the hatchway. The raw materials completely cover the intensifier bar and almost half of the vacuum head. As per standard procedure, raw materials are blended for a total of 15 minutes. The second shift operators make the first attempt to charge benzaldehyde from the liquid feed tank. This procedure calls for the use of the intensifier bar during the addition of the benzaldehyde. Due to the slow rate of charge, the bar is run two different times for a total of 10 minutes. The operators observe that a portion of the benzaldehyde is in the vacuum line separator bowl. There should be no liquids in the vacuum line during this type of operation. The third shift makes at least three attempts to inject benzaldehyde into the batch. Each attempt fails. Operators observe that the benzaldehyde is running back into the vacuum separator. During each attempt to add the liquid into the batch, the vessel is rotated with the intensifier bar running. The operators open the vessel twice to remove and clean the spray nozzle. Both times the vessel is opened, the operator observes a large amount of dust inside the vessel. This is reported to the shift supervisor, who checks the inside of the blender and observes a spot approximately 8 inches in diameter on top of the material that is bubbling and smoking. The attempts to add the benzaldehyde are stopped, and the blender is locked out. A gauge on the vessel has an abnormally high reading of approximately five pounds per square inch. Because a nitrogen purge is on the vessel, the gauge is replaced with a nipple. 
and the pressure is relieved into the PK-125 room. The nitrogen purge rate is then increased. An operator arrives at the facility and notes a rotten egg smell in the manufacturing area and a similar odor in the hallway between the rooms. Another employee arrives at the facility and smells an odor in the warehouse. Another operator states that when he adjusted his respirator, he smelled hydrogen sulfide. A third shift operator exits the PK-125 room and tells the supervisor that he observed a puff of smoke coming from the nipple they installed on the vessel. The supervisor decides to evacuate the plant. The vice president of regulatory control decides to offload the product into drums. A seven-person response team, including a supervisor, is assembled to unload the vessel. One employee is putting nitrogen into drums. Another employee is standing by in the doorway with a fire hose. Members of the fire brigade are also stationed in the hallway outside the PK-125 room. Four drums of material are offloaded from the vessel without incident. While the fifth drum of material is being unloaded, a loud noise is heard from the vessel, prompting the response team to exit quickly into the hallway. After a short time, the team returns into the room and continues the unloading process. Immediately, a loud hiss is heard. It stops momentarily, followed a few seconds later by two more hissing noises, and then a whoosh sound. This sound is followed by an explosion and almost instantly, a second explosion. It is reported that the explosion generated a bright yellow fireball. Flames are observed rising approximately 300 feet above the plant. The supervisor and three other employees are fatally injured at the scene. A fifth employee later dies as a result of injuries incurred during the explosion.